Great, thank you for the kind introduction. So I'm really happy to be here at a conference, physical conference, to see people um, alive and not just behind screens. And I'm quite happy to present our project Mobi Data Lab, uh, Labs for Prototyping Future Mobility Data Sharing Solutions. I think a quite important topic. So from the European Commission uh, presentations now to an H2020 finance project. Shortly about the project, uh, it is funded within the H2020 context, mobility for growth, and then 2018 to 2020 call of the European Union. Uh, we did set up a number of partners, so 10 partners, uh, I will name them here, it's ACA, now Accordis, Ethan from Greece, CNR, nearby from Pisa, the F6F from Ireland, we here, um, ICOR, Kizur, now named uh, Earth from France, the KU Leuven for the legal part, Polis and uh, University from, um, uh, from Spain, uh, the URV. So the project did start on February 2021, uh, just in the midst of the pandemic, and it will end in yeah, uh, 2024, so we are roughly half time in the project. So about mobility data sharing, the challenge, um, yeah, we all know how important data sharing is. Data is the, the gold we are all working with, and uh, it's super important. We know all the mobility services. Um, they are appearing in both in the public and the private sector. And there is more and more data being produced at a higher pace in various forms. Data almost everywhere. When you're booking a travel to here to this conference, you have an, a couple of uh, portals where you're producing data, where you're using data, and so on. So I would assume everybody agrees that data sharing um, is quite important. It can unlock new insights and uh, should lead to more efficient processes and new products. But there is still a lot of reluctance to share data. There will be blocker. And the barriers, yeah, I put in here six of them. The main concerns are privacy concerns, for sure. So not everybody wants to share travel data movement data, positional data, uh, ticketing data, and so on. Uh, for companies, there's the risk of losing competitive advantage. So when you have, when you are at the market to uh, share data, that could mean that you are showing some further insights into your business case. Then there is a technical gap and lack of cloud solutions. Um, I think that's doable. We saw all in the past years that there are a lot of cloud solutions are coming up, but the specific mobility cloud solutions are not, not there. So there is still a lack of that. Then we do have the regulatory compliance. Um, that could be also a barrier. So from the political point of view, uh, then there is also a fear of losing control of the data, so of your data, data from individuals, or data from companies that are sharing uh, the data that, for example, another company can take this data and build a use case on top of that. And last but not least, the interoperab interoperability issues. Um, yeah, to make data interoperable and make it easy to connect the services and the data. Our path to the solution is um, yeah, based on four pillars. So the state of the art, uh, we are building an open knowledge base to share knowledge on mobility data. It's a kind of a theoretical study. We are providing this knowledge via our mobidatalab.eu webpage in an open knowledge base about legal stuff, about data, privacy and governance stuff, technical standards. Um, and further information regarding mobility data and the things that you need to be aware to share this data. Then the second pillar is the proof of value. Um, we will initiate a transport cloud. This is an implementation. So this will be an EU-wide portal of mobility open data to access this data. 
for public transport data, road transport data in selected areas together with our reference group members and um, people institutions that uh, want to be part of this initiative. Data about weather, pollution data and further open data which is relevant for the mobility sector. We will put that into practice in the third pillar in living and virtual labs. So the organizing labs and events, hackathons, codagons, datatons, city challenges, and we are connecting with uh, companies, startups, people that are acting in this space to figure out best ways to solve this mobility sharing challenges. And last but not least, in the fourth pillar, we will assess the impact to give an, um, a clear assessment of the project. We initiate an evaluation framework uh, where we can rate our project. We did some market analysis, provided business models. Um, intellectual property is for sure a quite important topic and further things. So stepping into the single pillars that I described briefly on the slide before, the open knowledge base gives you further information and in legal and governance things. So what are the legal things that you need to be compliant to share this data? What is important for data suppliers, for data users, when they are working with the data from a legal point of view? Then about data privacy, we are providing some guidance on data anonymization, on privacy by design, uh, providing methodologies to apply that on the data and so forth. The standards topic, so uh, we'll come to that back later in a more detail. There are a lot of standards and the data is super heterogeneous, so you need to be aware of the standards and you need to have fitting standards and probably new standards will evolve to make this data fitting. Further, cloud solution frameworks to adapt clouds, the existing clouds, to being able to handle this uh, mobility data. And last but not least, the use cases that are quite important that we um, that built with our reference group members that are working on real-world use cases. Use cases such as emission reporting, a better estimated time of arrival, the analysis of linked open data um, parts, and uh, doing analytics and visualization of data at all. The proof of value is then the practical implementation, the transport cloud. So it's part of that is the cloud federation. We do have a reference data catalog, so it's quite good to saw the two talks before me in a row. They did present a lot of this geo network parts. So this is quite important to make the data fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. An overview on data access services. So it's not just about the data, it's also about services. Uh, data is the one part, but just with data you cannot do anything. You need to have services that will help you to do these mobility challenges, to solve these challenges. And then the fourth part here is data privacy, the, about the anonymization, so we are applying algorithms. One part of the project is uh, doing research in this field and using this project to apply this most recent research in our transport cloud. Further, we will have uh, data processes about geographic enrichment. Um, you have different data sets, you will connect these data sets, you link these data sets, you enrich that with further data. Where also licenses are a topic, so you are not allowed to do each and everything with each and every data set you will have. It's about semantic enrichment, so the whole part of RDF, Sparkle, and linked open data. And yeah, the processes are quite open to be or get extended uh, with other enrichment processes based on the demands of the uh, reference group and uh, the project stakeholders. We will put this into practice in living and virtual labs, as I mentioned, with our two partners, 
Polis and F6S, one from Brussels, Belgium, the other one from Ireland. We do have connections to a large network of cities and regions that are also data providers to uh, SMEs and startups and data users. So both will participate, provide challenges for our living and virtual labs. So this is then the part where we are doing the practice after the theoretical discussions, the implementation. We will bring that up to life with our reference group members. You see here on the, we see the mouse here, uh, on the right part of the screen, there are a couple of our reference group members that are really providing mobility solutions. They're providing data and we will implement this together with them and having feedback from them to figure out what would be good solutions for mobility data sharing. Then this impact assessment this is also something to justify uh, the, uh, the project investments. We did one a couple of surveys within the project. We did a market analysis to figure out what's already there, whether from a proprietary solutions uh, in the open source market or further uh, mobility data sharing providers. We did a gap analysis and we provided business and revenue models. Uh, overall, we also did introduce the data sharing assessment framework. All this generated knowledge um, here is available on our website, so these documents are public, so we can do a brief look at this and uh, figure out uh, what you can use for your work on mobility data. Now to the realization. So as I mentioned, we had a lot of discussions in the, in the group, in the project group, which is a very complementary group of stakeholders, so the 10 partners. We get to our reference group for the implementations. So we did some planning. It was a quite agile and iterative process after the project did start. Based on the planning, we did the first implementations. We are doing continuously iterate on that. So it's planned in a very agile way to get further feedback during the three years project into the system that we can react on the feedback and implement this. And overall, I hope after three years, we are doing the partying and are all happy to provide some proper solutions for, for these challenges. So that's the big vision. The architecture, how we will realize that, you see here on the left hand, uh, on the number one, there are the actors, that are the data consumers. We have data channels, they're providing data via API services. Uh, we do have... Uh, components that we want to normalize in the project to have like a kind of standardized access on the data. I will further explain how this is needed. Uh, we are having a metadata catalog available, one or more. You heard about GeoNetwork, but there are also more like OpenDataSoft or CCAN and also further ones. Uh, we are figuring out how to register services to make them compliant to this and uh, then make this data accessible for the data processors, for the anonymization, for data fusion, data enrichment, to make it usable also in our living labs as a first start. So I mentioned standards. Standards in geodata, I think most of us are pretty much aware of that. So I think the OGC standards are quite common. Uh, everybody knows about WMS, WFS, Sensor Observation Service, the new OGC API features, but also OpenStreetMap data, so the SOTM was right a couple of days ago. Uh, then the proprietary parts, the file geodatabase and shape. Um, spatial metadata has been mentioned in the talks before, the catalog service for the web. But there's also this DCAT standard and DCAT AP, for uh, open data at all. So besides geodata, there is also other data existing without location, and they are quite popular in this sector. Besides that, we are having here public transport data, transmodel, NetX, GTFS, 
CRA, smart city data, which is important, ticketing data, like this OSPT, Calypso, road traffic data. So I'm coming from here, Datix 2 is a quite important standard. For new mobility data, uh, MDS, GBFS, just other standards. Then for the implementation, our architecture, data on the web, REST interfaces are important, XML for data uh, sharing uh, between web services, JSON as well, the open API standard for documentation. We have cloud storages available, just to name Amazon S3, which is quite popular. Uh, standards for data exchange, which is quite important. Standards for the semantic web. So this is just a part of standards that you need to interact within this mobility sector. So they are much more, and to get all these use cases in such a proof of concept, in such a prototype, it needs a lot of work, it needs to be managed, and the stakeholders need to be aware of that. So we are trying to figure out on how to narrow this scope, how to connect these standards, how to have these proper discussions, connecting um, mobility services with geodata people to figure out how to connect these standards that um, services are possible to run on these standards. A practical example here, data. When we started the project, we had access to data. So you see here on the right hand, we collected data, and the first thing is, well, when you don't know what to do, you take an Excel table and put like the references in. It was the first step, collecting that from all the stakeholders. So we had a list of a couple of hundred data sources. So, well, I'm, I'm a bit lazy, I don't want to do that, and I want to search this data, and yeah, we need a metadata management tool. So we did an importer for this Excel table, first thing, introduced that, and people saw, okay, well, that's quite cool. I can search now these services, metadata is available. That's not like this very boring topic, but there is a use of metadata. You can find the data that you're looking for. So, okay, well, that makes sense. But now, go back and maintain your metadata that others can access this metadata. It was the first part on data, and I think with data we are doing a good job. There are a lot of things possible, but uh, service APIs are, uh, are uh, another part here, and it's far harder. So the service APIs are more heterogeneous. We are having a um, routing pilot at the OGC. You see here the VGO app from here, proprietary, proprietary system. We have the open route service, the craft hopper, all of them having different standards, different start, destination things. So you need to bring them into one normalized schema to make use of them and make them exchangeable. So the data analytics use case is, as I mentioned, you have here an example of geo network that has been shown before. The data is searchable not just in an Excel table, you can access this via standardized interface. And the most important thing is that you're using then a web service here that you can access and not just a connection to a zip file on an HTTP server, which is um, yeah, definitely breaking the seamless user experience. You can integrate the, integrate the data then in your systems, for example here in QGIS, it can be very seamless when you're integrating the web services, you can reuse the data in further projects and it might be fairly easy. Okay, conclusion so far. So as mentioned, the mobility data is manifold from many perspectives. There are a lot of stakeholders that are working in this sector, therefore there are a lot of standards available. We do have uh, use cases set up with real world actors, which is complicated, but it gives us the chance to get a lot of feedback here and implement the right things. We are having discussions in panels, presentations across mobility stakeholder events, for example, in the Dachstuhl seminar series with a lot of researchers that are working in this sector. And we are involved in standards and standard discussions. We are, will have the transport cloud implementation, talking about data services and catalogs, 
and we want to bring this next year into these living labs with evolved use cases. So far. Next, as mentioned, the transport cloud will become into action. We will have the virtual labs and the living labs. Uh, yeah, take a look at uh, mobidatalab.eu and we are introducing the feedback loops and yeah, sharing data, sharing information and sharing value. One word about opportunity. So I'm here from a company, so you have the chance to apply for jobs at the job board here in front of the venue, uh, but also for this project. Uh, yeah, please scan this uh, QR code and or contact me also for further opportunities. With that, I will say thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed listening and looking forward to questions. Thank you, Johannes.